Welcome back guys, this is Eli from Mobox and this time we are going to create this cartoony water well. So this time we are going to do things a bit differently because I will have the original 3D reference in my scene so we can work on top of that. That makes it easier for you to see what's going on and it is also a bit easier for me of course. If you would like to work this way as well, you can download the reference file and the final version on our Patreon page. So let's get started. First off we are going to create the base of the water well. So that's just a simple tube shape. So let's create that. I'm going to scale this down roughly so we can line this up. So let's go with round numbers. Let's go with 50 by 70 on the outer radius. Maybe we can also add a bit more of a rotation segment so it's a bit smoother. So let's go with 50 as well. And we're also going to make this 15 centimeters high. So that's a rounder number. And we're also going to enable the fillet on this to get smooth edges. Um, but it doesn't need to be that strong, so let's just go with one segment and make it very small, something like 0.5 centimeters. Okay, that will do. Now we can make a second tube. Um, let's scale this down again a bit. And I remember we have this tube being 50 centimeters on the inner radius, so let's just copy that on this one on both sides, on both the inner and outer radius, or maybe you make the outer one one centimeter bigger. Let's uh, also give this a different height. Let's go with 50 as well. And I'm going to lower this so it kind of lines up with the edge of the other tube. So you can see that's what we have here, but it is a bit smaller than the actual bricks, but I will show you how to get those in just a minute. To prepare ourselves for that, we also want to change the rotation segments to something like 14. Um, you can see it's a bit more rough on the edges. Let's also disable the font tag so you can see it even better. And maybe I can hide the reference for now. So that's what we will be working with. But I'm going to undo that so we have the font tag still. One more thing we need to do on this tube is adding some more height segments. Let's go with four. So that's the four layers you can see on the bricks. So if we add some lines in the viewport, you can see that's the horizontal lines we just added. Okay, first off, let's continue with adding the simple base right here. I think you can actually um, just copy and paste this top one and move it down a bit. I'm going to disable the reference for now. And I'm going to make it bigger on the outer radius, so 80 for that. All the rest can stay the same. And I'm going to add one more below this. This one can be even bigger. Let's also go with clean numbers on all the tubes. And you're going to raise this. Um, maybe let's make this a bit smaller in height. So 10 centimeters. And make it touch with the other one. Okay, so now we are going to adjust this tube at the center here. First of all, we are going to make this editable and we're going to select some loops of polygons. So let's go into polygon mode and use the loop selection tool. You can access this by pressing U and L on the keyboard. So select the ring and press U and P to split this off. You can also right click and search for this split command here. So we've done that with the first one. Let's do the same with the second one and all the other ones as well. So now we still have the original tube at the top here and all the four other ones at the sides here. So what I'm going to do is enabling the lines to get a better view and I'm going to select uh, let's say the third one and the first one so every other pair and I'm going to rotate this slightly so we have a bit of an offset. It may also be a bit easier to hide the original one for now. So the next thing we want to do is adding the thickness or the kind of brick look to this. Uh, the easiest way to do this is just selecting one of these rings, going to Mo Graph, and let's add the Mo Extrude as a child of this. You can do that while holding Shift while clicking on it. Okay, so we have this, and you can already see we have some additional thickness to the polygons, but it isn't exactly right this way. So let's decrease these steps to just two of them, and we can also adjust how it looks in the Transform tab. So right now it's extruding at 5 centimeters. It doesn't need to be that big, so let's go with something like 1.2. And the scaling can be just as it is. Now it is a bit sharp right now, and I would like it to be a bit smoother. 
So what we can also do is adding a bevel deformer inside of this. So let's create the bevel deformer. You can also hold command or control on the keyboard to make it a second child of the tube object like this. And we're going to make some adjustments on this. So first of all, you want to enable the use angle option that limits which edges will be beveled. We're also going to make this size a bit bigger. Let's go with 1.5 maybe. And we're also going to add more subdivisions to this to get a smoother result. Something like five of them. Okay, looking cool. So now we can just copy and paste these two childs of this tube object to the other loops we just created. So there we go. This gives us the kind of brick look we were looking for. Okay, so you can notice the reference was a bit bigger. Um, we can adjust that if you want to. So I'm just going to select everything that created the bricks and we're going to disable the Y axis on this uh, while we're inside of the scale tool. So click on this so it turns gray. And now you can just scale this up like this until it fits like you want it to. And it doesn't scale on the height because we disabled the Y value. So that's the easiest way. Okay, so let's continue with the parts at the top here. First of all, we can create a cube object. I know the specific values to get a nice proportion, so let's go with 14 by 220 by 14. I'm also going to add a bit more segments on the Y value, so let's go with 4. We will need this because we will be deforming the shape a bit. I'm also going to enable the fillet on this. Let's go with uh, just one subdivision again and 0.5 or 0.6 on the radius of this. And now I'm going to add the taper deformer as a child of this, so you can do that again while holding shift while clicking it. That should make the size exactly the same as the parent straight away. So we're going to change the strength of this to something like minus 66. That gives us a larger top, but I don't want that. So let's rotate this taper deformer 180 degrees. Okay, so that's that beam at the side. We want this in a symmetry, of course. So what I can already do is creating that symmetry object and dragging the cube inside of it. And now we can start moving it to the side. If it isn't copying, it is because we don't have the right mirror plane on the symmetry object. So let's just scroll through this until it looks correct. So for me, that's the X and Y value. Let's also raise these cubes until it kind of lines up. We can do that in the side view, for example. I think I made them sit right on top of this bottom tube. All right, so the next part we can create on this is this upside down V-shaped beam. Um, there are multiple ways to do this, but I try to find the most adjustable way to do this. So it is a bit easier or more forgiving for you guys. So we are going to create a rectangle spline. Um, let's adjust the plane on this so it is ZY. I just want it to be pointing this way. You can scale this down, of course, and let's raise this up. You can already drag this under the symmetry object as well, but we need to make sure everything stays uh, together in the symmetry. So let's also just create a null, which we can drag inside of here. And we can drag the objects under there, so everything stays together. So let's drag this rectangle to the side. And we're going to scale this down even more. Something like about the size of this cube, so let's go with 14 centimeters maybe. I will be going in the side view of my reference because that's a bit easier. And I'm going to line this up roughly with the top here. So this should be the center, but if you look at this position here at the bottom, you want this to be at exactly zero centimeters. So my reference is a bit off, but that doesn't matter. I just want it to be at the center of the scene. Okay, so before we continue, we can already add this inside of a loft object. So hold the Alt or Option key on your keyboard while clicking on this. That makes it the parent of the rectangle. So now I have the rectangle selected and we can duplicate this to the side here while holding Ctrl or Command so it makes a copy. And we're just going to move this to get a new shape. So you can also rotate this of course. And you can also scale it up if you want to. That gives it a bit more of a dynamic shape. All right, so that should be about it. I'm going to disable the reference so you can see what happened. So something like this. And of course there are multiple ways to do this, 
but I wanted to choose the most forgiving way to make this. So now if you just select a rectangle, you can move it around to adjust the shape. So that makes it a bit easier for you. So now we still only have this side, but we want it to be mirrored to the other side. So that means we need some kind of symmetry inside of a symmetry. So we have this loft object. Let's prepare it for a clean result. So what we need is a cap on this side, but we don't need it at the center here. So let's disable that at the start. And you could add a fillet cap on the end here, but we will skip that because we will do it with a bevel deformer later or something. So let's just keep it as this. And we're going to make a symmetry object as a parent of this loft object. So let's just hold Alt again while clicking on this. That gives us this mirrored result. So that's exactly what we need. I'm also going to move this a bit more to the side. I'm also going to make this first rectangle a bit larger. Like that. So it kind of overlaps at the sides here. Alright, so that's the top part. Now we need these kind of weird shaped beams. And we're going to do that in the same way. So we can already create a null inside of the symmetry object. So just hold shift again to make it a child. And inside of here we can make the new loft object. Also while holding shift. And we are also going to add a new rectangle inside of it as well. So also holding shift once more. Let's change the uh, direction of the plane again to ZY. And I'm going to scale this down. Let's move this to this side again. We can go with a starting value of roughly 14 centimeters again. And I'm going back in the side view so it's a bit easier to see what I'm doing. And now we can start making duplicates again. It's a bit more of a difficult shape than the other one, but that's why the reference could be very useful for you. Okay, so that should be fine. I can notice that the bottom one is a bit too large. Okay. If you don't want it to taper like this uh, when looking at it from the front, you can also just select all the rectangles and change the width on all of them to anything you want. That makes it more uniform. Okay, so I'm just going to stick with this. It's not perfect, but it should be fine. I also notice um, I lost the symmetry on this one. That's because the original loft is not inside of the new null. So let's drag that inside of there as well. All right, so now we can add this cap on the top if you want to. There are multiple ways to do this again, but I find it to be the easiest to just create a cube object. Let's make it uh, roughly 10 by 10 by 150. I think that's kind of the width of this uh, scene. Let's also add uh, segments on the length. So I need to see the lines for this. Um, so that's the Z value. Let's go with four of them. And what I'm also going to do is adding a segment on the X value. That way we can drag this up like this. And we're going to make this editable. Let's select uh, the polygons at this side and at the other side. And we can lower these and scale these out a bit like so. And maybe even scale them on the Y value. And maybe we can also select the edges at the top here and lower these as well. Okay, so that brings us to this kind of roof at the top. So I'm just going to disable the reference so it's a bit clearer to see what's going on. Let's disable the lines for now. So we can create this starting off with a cube object again. So let's create that. Um, what I used as a starting value was 36 by 2.5 by 12. So that's the center of one piece. But we will start extruding this to the side. So let's make this editable. And we're going to select the polygon at the back. Let's scale this to the side. Something like 125-ish percent should be fine. Okay, let's select the sides. And we're going to extrude these to the sides as well while holding control or command and let's go with 200 percent we're going to lower this just a bit something like uh, four centimeters and we're going to extrude these selected polygons once more let's go with something like just 120 percent then we're going to select all the points at the back with the rectangle selection tool that's easier to select all of them and we're going to scale these something like 80 percent that gives us this kind of shape. 
Let's also select just these uh, middle ones. And we're going to scale this again if you want to. Something like this. It's up to your personal preference. So now we have one piece. Let's add these inside of a cloner. So I'm just going to create the cloner object and drag the cube inside of there. Let's change the mode to a grid array. We're going to add four of these and we only need one on the Y value. We don't need them on top of each other and we can use the endpoint scaling. So let's move this up a bit so we can use these handles to see how this lines up. So we want them to be intersected just a bit because we will make some adjustments so they lay on top of each other. So let's go with something like 70 um, by 87, I think, like this. We're going to rotate this also, so it kind of lines up. Okay, and now we can go inside of the cloner, it's transform tab, and here you have the rotation values. So you can rotate every individual part of them. So we need to rotate on the B value. Let's go with something like minus 10 degrees. Okay, so that looks good. If you want to, you can also delete the font tag of this cube object. It's up to your personal preference again. And what I also like to do then, if you do this, is adding a bevel deformer inside of this. Um, so with shift again, to make it a child. Let's use the angle option again. And we're going to make this just a bit smaller, like this. If you notice you have these gaps inside of here, you can still adjust the polygon size inside of this. So let's scale this up a bit. Okay, so now we have these. Let's also go on the cloner and make sure we have this instance mode to be a render instance. That will make things a lot faster. And then you can choose to manually copy and paste this, or you can drag it inside of the symmetry but that way you will have to keep it as instances. Also make sure you make it a second copy of the symmetry object. Okay, so that way we covered most of all of this. Let's continue with the final details. So we're going to add a cube at the side maybe. Let's make it 18 by 37 by 18 again. That's what I used. I'm going to enable the reference so I know where to position it. So kind of up here. I'm also going to enable the fillet on this. Just one centimeter, one segment could be fine as well. Like this, and I'm going to drag this inside of the symmetry again. Okay, now I'm going to create a long cylinder. So let's create that. Let's make it just three centimeters thick by 158 long. I'm going to rotate this. Let's raise this up. Let's use the reference again so I'm exactly where I want it to be. Okay. So now we can make a duplicate of this to the side. We're going to make this a lot shorter, something like four centimeters, a bit bigger of a radius. And let's go with a lot less segments, something like just six of them. That creates this kind of bolt cap on it. So that's this piece. We can also create um, a copy again if you want to and put it on this side. But for this one, we want it to be inside of the symmetry object again, like this. And we're going to adjust the scale again. So a bit thinner, a bit larger. And we can add some more segments on the rotation again. Like this. We can also use the fillet again on this one. So just one segment and 0.5 centimeters or something like that. Maybe even smaller, 0.2. Let's make a copy to this side again and make it larger. We can adjust the fillet on this one because it's larger. And we also need a cylinder at the center here, but I notice we don't have the bolt right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one. We don't do this in the symmetry because it doesn't exactly line up. Okay, so for the cylinder at the center, I want to select this middle one because we have the exact position to be centered. And let's just copy and paste this. We're going to make this one shorter, of course. And let's adjust the size to be bigger. We're going to add three segments on the height. So that's the horizontal axis, kind of like this. And now we can adjust this manually by just selecting the polygons, or you can add a deformer on this. In this case, this would be the bulge deformer. So 
make that a child of it. And we're going with minus 15% or something close to that on this strength value. That creates this kind of shape. Now we want this rope on here. Um, so I'm going to disable the reference to be a bit cleaner. So now we want the rope around this. Um, the easiest way to do this is creating a helix object. But let's undo that and create it exactly at the cylinder its position. So have the cylinder selected and create the helix while holding Ctrl or Command. That way we create it at exactly the same position. So let's scale this down because it's way too large right now. We're going to change the plane value. So let's go with the X, Z value. I'm going to move this to this side so we can kind of line it up between these two lines if you want to. Something close to that. Now you can scale this down so it fits just a bit bigger than the original cylinder. Something like this. And inside of the helix we're going to adjust some of these values. So first of all we can adjust the height of this to be something like 22. That way I can move it somewhere closer to this place. Now to get more turns in this helix we want to adjust the end angle. So you can just manually do that. But we want it to end exactly at the middle of the cylinder at this very end point. So we need to use specific values. So what I used was 2281. Now we can rotate this, let's say um, 180 degrees and move it back to this side because I want this point to be at this side here. Okay, so now this is just a spline. We need to create a circle spline and a sweep object as well and just drag this inside of there and of course change the circle size. You can also notice how dark this gets because of all the polygons inside of here. So for the circle you can select that and change the intermediate points to natural. That kind of cleans it up already. And on the helix you can also do something similar. So we're going to make this one editable and select this very end point and make a copy to the bottom here. So it goes inside of the well. You do that by holding Ctrl or Command again. Okay, so that's that piece. Let's enable the reference again to see what's missing. So we just need this handle right here. I'm going in the side view because I have the reference and I'm going to create a rectangle spline again. Let's raise this up and make sure it is pointing in the right direction. So I think that's the XY value. I'm going to scale this down. And actually I can make this editable so we can easily scale this up. Let's rotate this. And I'm going to roughly scale this this way. Now we can select these two points and scale this up a bit. And I'm going to select all the points of this, so all four of them by pressing Command or A or manually selecting them. Right click and go to chamfer and just click and drag all the way until it's fully rounded. So now we have this spline. Let's go back to the 3D view and go this way. And we can add thickness to this with the extrude object. So let's make that the parent of this. And we don't want it to go this direction but the other one and also a lot smaller. So let's go with minus 4 or minus 3, I think. Maybe even 2. Okay, so that's enough. We can also um, add some fillet caps on this to get a bit more rounding. But we don't want it to be that big. So maybe let's just go with 0.2 on both sides. And you can also check the constraint option so the size remains the same. Okay, um, let's also make this one a bit bigger. And now I want this handle right here. Let's just use the cylinder we had right here and kind of position it to be the center. And I'm, and I'm going to roughly scale this in the same way. Let's add more rotation segments again. And we can even add a fillet cap on this, but it doesn't need to be that strong. So something like that will do. And we can also add more height segments. So let's add three again, like we did on this uh, very center piece. So now we can add the same bulge deformer again as a child of it. Let's go with a minus value again. Minus 15 was good. Okay, so that looks like we have all the parts we needed for this. You can notice we have some small details on here. 
The bricks are just cubes, of course. The rocks are platonic objects. And the grass is just a cube object with a taper deformer. Now for the bushes here, it's a bit different. But before we start with these, I think it's a good time to save your file if you haven't already. So what we can already do is creating that uh, cylinder that's kind of the ground. Like this. Let's also add a bit of a fillet on it. And let's start with the bushes. So what I did was using simple spheres. You can just make duplicates of this to get roughly the shape you want it to be. I'm going to disable the reference again. So something like this could just be enough. And now we are going to create a volume builder with a volume mesher. Let's drag the builder inside of the mesher and let's drag the spheres inside of the builder, like so. With a scene of this scale, we can keep it at 10 centimeters, but it really depends on how large your objects are. We're going to add a smooth layer on top of all of this. Um, but let's go inside of here. But that makes everything kind of one large blob. So that's because of the voxel size being very large. So let's reduce this to something like three or four centimeters. That gives us this result. You can also notice we can still adjust how this looks. And now it's a bit too smooth, so I want this to be a bit rougher to get that bushy look. What I did was just adding the volume measure inside of a null. So just group it together with a displacer object. So inside of the same null. And for the shading we can use a noise. It can be anyone you like, but I use the FBM noise. And let's go outside of here and make it just 3 centimeters in height. So that's the kind of look I went for. I'm going to skip the simple stuff with the grass and the rocks on top of this. It's just a bit of tinkering. I've done it on most tutorials, so you should know it by now. Let's just go straight to the materials and the lighting of this. So first of all, maybe we can just use the lighting. I'm going to group everything together to get a bit more of a clean hierarchy. So we are going to add a physical sky to this. Like that. In the time and location, you can use anything you like, of course, but I like to use something close to 4 p.m. Also notice you can still rotate the sky if you want to, to get the shadows in the direction you like. If you don't see them, you can just go to the options here of your viewport and enable some of these settings to see what's going on. Let's also add a compositing tag on top of this, so right click on it, go to Cinema 4D tags and check compositing. We don't want this to be seen by the camera, so we don't want this background, because we will add our own. Okay, so let's go to the render settings and make sure you have an ambient occlusion turned on. You can also set the renderer to physical if you want to already. And we're going to add an environment on this as well. That will make things a bit brighter, but we need to enable this fully by setting some percentage to this. 70 should be fine. So let's click on this and see what happens. So you can see we have a nice and soft look. Everything is bright enough, but we still have shadows. So that should be fine. So let's start with the materials. Let's create one for the main wood pieces. So we use something kind of brownish, but it can still be kind of yellow even. Let's also go to the reflectance and adjust the color of this as well. That makes it a bit more vibrant instead of having the white shiny stuff on top of it. So what you basically do is using a similar color, but a bit brighter. Um, we can also make this a bit stronger on the reflection. So that's just the specular strength. And we can drag this on the wooden pieces. If dragging it on top of there doesn't work for you, you will have to do it in the hierarchy. You can also make a variation of this color to get a bit more difference on some other pieces. But I will just stick with this one for now. Okay, let's create the material for the tiles at the top. Of course, you can use anything you like again, but I like the kind of red look. Let's also adjust the color on the reflectance again. And I'm going to make the width of this reflection a bit smaller, so it isn't as obvious. In the reflectance, I'm also going to add a backmill layer on top of this to give a shiny look. Let's go down to layer for now straight away. And we're going to set it to dielectric. We're also going to adjust the roughness to be a bit stronger and the rest can stay the same. So that should be this part. The wood can also be at the top here. So now let's create the metal parts. Of course this will be grey. 
I like to make it kind of blue. I'm also going to add a bit of a noise on top of this, so just create a noise texture. Set the mode to add and put it on just a very small percentage. Inside of here I will make it a bit less strong as well, so just from 50% grey or something close to that to white and I'm going to make this larger. So 500% and we're also going to make this uh, reflection a bit stronger with the Bagnell layer and the layer Fresnel again on dielectric and let's also increase the roughness once more. So let's drag that on top of these pieces, maybe a bit difficult again. So we'll disable the symmetry if you need to. Let's also quickly make something for the rope. We can just use a very similar color as the wood. But let's just make it a bit darker. For the base right here I created something specific. So let's go with the gray color again. And I'm going to add a bump on this. So let's go here and we will use a noise and just make it very large on the global scale, so a thousand percent will do. And I'm going to drag this on top of these pieces. Okay, let's enable the symmetry again and take a first look how this looks so far. Okay, pretty good so far, but we need a background for this because it's a bit hard to judge. So let's create the background object and we're going to create the material for this also. Let's go inside of here and we are going to create a gradient. Let's go inside of the gradient by clicking the thumbnail. Let's set the mode to 2DV and we will go from a very bright blue color to a very bright blue, somewhere close to white even. Okay, let's drag this on this background object. And you can notice that instantly makes things look different, although it doesn't affect the colors. So now we still need something at the base here because it's very dark right now. Let's create something for the grass top. In the color channel we are going to use a layer system. So create layer, go inside of there and we are going to make a first color shader and we are going to make this green of course. Something very bright and fresh. So now let's go back to the layers and we are going to add a noise shader on top of this and turn it to a layer mask mode. Let's go inside of the noise and set this to um, nooches and we will be increasing the scale a lot to something like 2000%. Now let's go back to the layer system again and we're going to add one more color shader and this will be a different shade of green, so possibly a bit darker. Okay, let's also go to the reflectance and change the color on this one um, because grass doesn't reflect white colors. What you can also do is going in the bump channel and adding the same kind of uh, noise we added inside of the layer system. So that was the Nuches noise on 2000%, like this. So let's make the cylinder editable and make a loop cut somewhere around this place or even higher. That way we can select everything at the top here and turn it into polygons. That way we can select all the top polygons here and drag it on top of there. Okay, now we need something for the bottom base here, so let's create that. We're going to use a very similar method, so let's create the layer system once more. We're going to add the first color again. Of course this will be brown. Let's go outside of it. Let's create the noise shader with the layer mask option again. For this noise, I think the Hama noise is looking nice because it's very sharp, kind of like stones. We can keep it as it is, I think, and go outside of it. Let's create the second color channel. And this one will be a bit of a brighter and grayer kind of brown. Let's also do the trick with the bump channel. So let's add the same noise inside of here. So that was Hama. Okay, let's drag it on top of here. But you can notice it overrides all the other stuff. And let's make sure the grass material is behind the other one. I'm also quickly going to make a very simple material for the bush right here. So one more thing to make this look even better is adding the right kind of camera. So I'm going to make this, um, let's say, 100 millimeters to get the zoom look. That makes things look like a miniature. Kind of like this. Let's center it to the view. 
and then inside of here let's go to the physical tab and make this depth of field very small you can only use this if you have the physical render enabled in the render settings and also go to the physical tab and make sure the depth of field is being selected let's also go outside of the camera view so we can check where the depth of field will be happening so right now it's happening in front of everything just make sure this point is being lined up with the center of your focus point like this so let's render once more and see the result and there you have it if you want to take a detailed look at the original model i created you can download that on our patreon page so go check that out and again if you created your own water well you can tag us on instagram so we can have a look at it so that's all i have for you guys today i hope you liked it and i will see you in the next video